welcome back to my channel this is Tay and I pray that you all have had a great week and let us go into a word of prayer dear Heavenly Father I thank you for this day I thank you for waking us up a new day I thank you for who you are I thank you for loving us Jesus I thank you for dying on the cross for our sins thank you for keeping us thank you for protecting us daily thank you for watching over us thank you for guarding us and watching us as the apple of your eye thank you for loving us so much Jesus that you just gave your life for us thank you so much we'll never be able to repay you Jesus we owe you our lives we thank you I pray for all those to a law said to repent and turn from their wicked ways and turn towards you Jesus let us put you first today and every day and we praise you and we give you all the glory because as for me and my household we will praise you Lord we will give you the praise in Jesus name amen and amen so I thank you all for tuning in to this message and I just give God all the glory and the praise for me to be able to minister to you all on this platform. I thank Jesus for this beautiful day. Um, today I'm at the park with my son. But we're just enjoying the beautiful day. Um, even though we're in the midst of this coronavirus, we're still getting out. And even though he's not able to play in the playground, he could play in the field. So I just pray that you all are still able to get some fresh air. And just thank Jesus for a new day that he has made. No matter what circumstance you're going through, know that you got to rejoice in this day. A new day that the Lord has made. Amen. So today, the title of my lesson will be, How to Recognize a Counterfeit in a Relationship. And I'm going to talk on eight red flags to look out for, from my experience, my personal experience, what I went through in relationships, how I know these are eight red flags and that these are signs of a counterfeit. So I'm going to be looking at my notes on my phone. Um, if you can get your notepad and Bible and write your notes with me. Um, let's go to John chapter 8 verse 12. John chapter 8 verse 12. One of the ways to test it to the light of God is when Jesus spoke again to the people. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that's in John chapter 8 verse 12. Just like you test counterfeit money and you hold it up to the light. Evil loves to hide in darkness. A counterfeit thrives in darkness. In 2 Corinthians 11.14, it tells us Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. He is deceptive and cunning. I know from experiences just how much counterfeits can look just like the real deal. They can come with everything you pray for. However, red flags will eventually surface and come to the light. I will list several red flags. And like I mentioned, I will list eight red flags to look out for. Number one. They never want to pray together or study God's word together. For instance, I remember asking a guy that I was talking to at the time. Uh, if he wanted to pray, and he always came up with an excuse, like, no, uh, you go ahead and do it today. I'm not really good at praying. And that right there is a red flag. And that should be a red flag to you when somebody doesn't want to pray together. God wouldn't send you someone who doesn't want to pray with you and get closer to God with you. So that's number one, a red flag. Number two. On the other hand, they may pray and study God's word with you. And that's an example of an angel of light as well. They come doing everything you want them to do. Pray with you, study God's word with you, fast together. But they're still a counterfeit. So that's one that you really have to ask God for discernment and understanding for. And really pray if this is God sent or is it a counterfeit. Is my heart leading me or is the Lord leading me? And you could go into one of my previous studies where I talked about 
um, it was on the study of how the world tells you to follow your heart, but how the Lord says to follow Him. So go back to that previous study and don't let your heart deceive you. So just because they're praying with you, studying God's word with you, that doesn't mean that they're not a counterfeit. Because I had ex both experiences. One where they didn't want to pray, study God's word, and the other that wasn't God's best where they did study God's word with me and did pray with me and all of that. So that doesn't mean anything. They, just because they do that, that don't mean that they're God's best for you. So you really have to get discernment on that. Really, really hear God's voice concerning that relationship. If that is a counterfeit or or not. Number three. They Number three red flag. They lead you to sin by pushing past already established boundaries. For example, they may say it don't take all of that. This depreciates your worth and doesn't add to your value. So if you already set up a boundary and told them, told the guy that you're in a relationship with, no, I'm not going to kiss. I'm not going to kiss until I don't want to wait until marriage. And then they say, okay, that's fine with me. But later on down the road, in the, as the relationship progresses, they say, uh, they may say to you, uh, you sure we can't kiss? Or they try to tempt you and do different things, try to say different things like, well, can we just kiss on the cheek or can we just kiss uh, on the hand? Or they just try to keep pushing the limits of the boundaries. By doing different steps. And then eventually they say. You sure is this. Uh, they try to say. Is it a sin to kiss? But we know that it's not a sin to kiss. But we know that it can lead to temptation. So it's best just to avoid it. And wait until marriage. When you get to the altar. And they say. The preacher says. You may now kiss your bride. I believe that's when. The guy should kiss his bride. <laughs> Amen. So just wait until marriage and don't do anything that leads you into temptation that cause sin. Because the, the blessing of the Lord maketh you rich and add no sorrow. And that's in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. The, when the Lord bless you with his best, there won't be any sorrow that comes with it. Don't allow any God to tell you, ladies, that it doesn't take all of that. You know, that's too religious. Because, no, you have to have high standards in the Lord and wait on His best. Number four. They try to talk sexually to you little by little to see what they can get away with. They can say things on the phone to you such as, um, what are you wearing? What are you wearing right now under your clothes? And little things like just different sexual talk like what position do you like and things like that ladies you need to avoid those things and realizing something's a tick in your mind that ding 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 that's a counterfeit that's a red flag god want to see you somebody who's going to tempt you and lead you to sin to lead you further away from god no Stop that right now. Get away from that relationship. That's not God's best. Number five. The fruits of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians 5 verses 22 through 23 are not evident. They don't have the fruits of the Spirit. They're not patient. They don't have peace. They're not kind. They're not practicing self-control. They're not gentle. They're, they're not unselfish. So when you see somebody that's doing the exact opposite of the fruits of the Spirit, you just need to run. Get away from that relationship because that's run. not God's best. Number six. They don't pursue you at all or the bare minimum. Or the bare minimum. They don't want to call you. They don't want to text you. They don't want to. They don't want to call you. They don't want to text you. They don't want to visit you. And they act like they're not even interested. 
And sometimes when that happens, you have you question in your mind, is he interested? And let me tell you, when you get to that point in your mind where you have to question if the guy is truly interested, then I believe that he's not the one for you, ladies. I learned this many times through different experiences in my life that when you start questioning that, then they really aren't interested because a guy, a guy sent from God that's gonna. Uh, from God will pursue you and won't treat you like a burden and he won't treat you like you're a such a sacrifice to him you deserve a God that's going to pursue you just like Jesus Christ pursued the church and he won't complain about it but he'll be happy about it and he'll want to pursue you number seven you're compromising if you're compromising in any shape or form in any way and they won't sacrifice for you and they make you feel like a burden like I just mentioned and they take from you without the same level of commitment they take and take and take from you but they're not giving anything to you in a relationship they're just taking from you and just compromising your worth they're trying to compromise you in any way and take from you and uh, make you lower your standards but you have to really know your worth ladies so you won't settle for less know how much you're worth know that you're valuable to god you're valuable stop settling for less than your worth number eight you're confused you have a lack of peace you, you're not listening to the Holy Spirit. You have a lack of peace. You're confused. We know that the enemy, the devil, is the author of confusion. Jesus Christ is not the author of confusion. So when you have confusion, you don't have peace, you can't sleep at night, he is not the one. That's a red flag right there. He is not the one God sent for you. God won't send you any less than his best. So learn to hear God's voice. Have Pray for discernment. Listen to God's voice and heed to his voice. And harden not your hearts when you hear his voice. Harden not your hearts, ladies. I have mentioned these eight red flags to look out for. And that will show you a counterfeit. Because a counterfeit looks just like the real deal. Just like the real thing. But it's not. It's not God's best. So I pray that you stop settling for less, ladies. And wait on God's best because when he sends you his best it will be so worth the wait and know that you're valuable to God focus on Jesus Christ during this waiting time during your single season pursue the things of the Lord and the Lord will give you the desires of your heart put Jesus Christ first he won't give you anything more than you can bear and his blessings don't come with sorrow. His blessings come with joy. Hallelujah. So I pray that this message has ministered to you all. I pray that you have got something from this message and learn and just to know your worth and the weight on God's best. I thank you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please, please press that notification bell so that you'll be up to date on all my latest videos. And I will upload new videos every third Sunday of each month. And I just pray that you got something from this message and my previous messages. And I just give God all the glory and I give him all the praise. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you. Peace be with you all.